So this is the Series 2 Fire TV from Amazon. It's small at just 32 inches, or at least the version I have here, and it's only got a resolution of 720p. In 2023, is that still acceptable? Everything is 4K this, 4K that, or even 8K was mentioned a couple of years ago, but that seemed to have disappeared a little bit. Well, in my opinion, and for the reasoning behind me getting this TV, yes, 720p is acceptable. Let me run you through the TV as a whole, and perhaps you too may pick one of these up. Amazon has a range of Fire TVs now. The Series 2 is their entry level model, and you can purchase either the 32 inch model with the 720p display or a 40 inch model with a 1080p display. The 40 inch model retails at 299 here in the UK, and the 32 inch retails at 249. However, one of the reasons why I went for this TV was that during this year's Prime Day event thing, it was on sale for £150, and that is a bit of a bargain in my opinion. If you're thinking about getting an Amazon TV, they will be reduced in the sale events, so make sure you hold out until the time is right. So we know it's got a HD resolution of 720p, it's a backlit LED panel with HDR10, and it's 60Hz. It has built-in speakers at the bottom that fire down, they're 8 watts each, and includes a Dolby Digital Plus with pass-through. Inputs are on the side of the telly and include two HDMI 1.4 ports plus one HDMI arc so you can plug in a soundbar. There is an optical in also for audio Ethernet ports, although it does have Wi-Fi built in, USB ports, aerial inputs for free view, infrared emitter and mini AV ports. In the box you get the telly, the power lead, remote, batteries, two legs to allow you to put the TV on a stand if you wanted to. Phase amount options are 100 by 100 mil only, but that should be fine for mounting to your wall or stand like I have. Before I keep going, I will say as winter is here and this telly is next to my log burner, I will be using it quite a lot. So if you have any comments, drop them in the comment section below and I will try and get an answer for you. As you can see, I've got the big fleece on today as it is quite cold around the house. Visually, it's not the sleekest looking telly on the market. It does have bezels, it's somewhat thin, but chunkier at the bottom where the speakers are. It's got a glossy black frame and it won't win any awards for its looks, but I've certainly seen worse. I will say it is very lightweight, which helps when handling it. The interface for the telly is Fire TV, so if you've ever used a Fire TV stick before, you'll know what the UI is like. For me, it's a love-hate relationship. It's versatile, yes, it has a lot of options for content and makes a lot of stuff accessible including the ability to sideload certain apps if you wanted to. However, it's busy, it is a bit hectic on the homepage with apps, ads, suggestions, and sometimes it does annoy me. However, the remote control comes with a handy Alexa feature that allows me to bypass all that chaos. It's a nice remote, lightweight, functional, and easy to use. Quick buttons for Prime Video, Prime Music, Netflix, and Freeview, as well as the usual buttons you'd expect to have on a remote. To the very top is a blue Alexa button, hold it in, and speak into the remote and Alexa will action your command. So for me, I would say open Apple TV and instead of me scrolling on the menu, Alexa opens it straight away. It's so easy, even my kids do that now rather than searching and scrolling through the home screen. Moving on to picture quality, considering the price tag and the resolution of just 720p, I'm actually quite impressed. For context, I have a 4K telly in the other room and have done for years, so you could say that's what I'm used to viewing. It's a clear picture, brightness is okay, blacks are pretty good, not pixelated or faded. HDR, not sure, compared to my other telly with HDR, it's a very obvious brightness improvement, which I haven't noticed yet on the Series 2, unless I've been unlucky and not watched anything that has HDR on. I reckon it's on, but not that great. The color is a little dull, like it needs HDR, funnily enough. Now, it probably made all that sound a little bit poor, a little bit average, but it really isn't. And from the moment I turned it on, I've been impressed. Remember, this is a cheap telly with a low resolution, so you can't expect the best, but it's better than I expected. 720p at 32 inch works, it's enjoyable to use. 720p at higher screen sizes, and you're likely going to be less impressed. As for audio, it's more than adequate. It certainly won't blow you away or provide that cinematic experience, but sitting two or three meters away, from it and say 30, 40, 50% volume, more than loud enough and clear enough to enjoy what you're watching. The quality does drop off at the higher volumes. It's a little bit distorted, but I rarely had it that high as it would wake the kids up upstairs. I always recommend adding at least a soundbar to any TV nowadays. And as long as it's a fairly decent one, the difference will be night and day. The panel 
here is 24 inches inside, though there is a 27 inch panel available if that's more for you. It has a matte finish and has a max resolution of 1920 by 1080p with a 165 hertz refresh rate and is built around IPS technology. It is extremely bright, measuring at 369 nits at 100% brightness on my panel here, but when it comes to 0% brightness, it's still kicking out 139 nits of brightness. So for me, I wanted a cheap TV, one that would fit within this niche in my house, one that had all the streaming apps I needed with actual visual performance of being the fourth priority because this is a casual TV for me. This is not my main movie night TV. Given that brief and its performance over the last few weeks, I would happily recommend this telly to you if your requirements are similar to mine. If you're big on movies and TV series, getting a high spec telly, be it an Amazon one or not, will offer a much better experience but for everyone else, I don't think you'd be disappointed with this. That is a wrap on this video. If you have stuck around until the end, then thank you very much. And if you want to see more videos from us in the future, hit that subscribe button and all our future videos will pop up in your feed.